Disclaimer. We are interested in everything and experts in nothing. We enjoy learning, but get it wrong sometimes. We mean no disrespect, and if we mess up, kindly correct us. Let's take this ride together, unless your intention is to cause harm or distress. In which case, with utmost haste, fuck right off. I'm really, really curious. What What are you doing? I'm doing Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was inspired to do this because she was featured on Fucked Up Fairy Tales with Liz. She did a Baba Yaga series. Okay. And apparently, uh, the master you can play apprentice for in the upcoming video game that Justin sent me the information about that I freaked out and went, oh my God, I can't wait to be Baba Yaga's apprentice. Okay. Um, so thank you, Justin. I will never sleep again once that comes out. <laughs> um, so is she a misunderstood, neutral, supernatural? Fine, come in, I'll help you. Or is she a terrifying monster to scare children into behaving? Well, it depends on the story. That means some, yes. In some folklore, she is a witch who will eat you and display your head on a spike as a home decor, very goth granny style. Yeah, that's scary. Okay. Yes. To escape her, you must trick her, usually with the help of some other supernatural being that is pissed off at Baba Yaga for one reason or another. Okay. Or she is a mischievous witch who gets bored and makes desperate desperate travelers do increasingly weirder tasks when she could just hand them over the spell or the item from the window of her chicken-footed hut. (laughs) Wait, so she just, like, torments them for funsies because she's bored? Well, they usually need something from her. And it's usually something she can only provide. So she's got to get something out of the deal as well. Probably because she's bored as fuck and only has like her chicken foot house and skulls on sticks to talk to. I feel like the skulls on sticks are kind of a deterrent. Like if you're lonely and you need to exploit needy people for entertainment, maybe get rid of the spikes and you might have more company. Hey, hey, don't be messing with her vibe. <laughs> okay, this continue. is her vibe and people only seek her out when they're desperate. So she wants to make sure that some bored ass dude who's just going to be like, hey, how are you? Is going to stay the fuck away. But someone who has to rescue their beloved or save their village or child or whatever is going to be like, okay, heads on spikes. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. They're the ones that are going to come through. All right. Heard. So. my retirement goal. I want to be some crazy haired woman in the woods who feeds you and tells you crazy tales. Yeah. Even though my skulls will be plastic and glittery and my chicken footed hut will probably be like a dilapidated wind stream or something, but maybe I can paint some chicken feet. Who knows? Why not? So who is she really? Where did she come from? So in Slavic folklore, Baba Yaga, which is spelled B-A-B-A-Y-A-G-A, Mm-hmm. Also spelled B A B A J A G A. That's the Polish version. Sure. Okay. Kind of pronounced the same way, Baba Yaga. We are Polish are weird, and there's a lot of consonants shoved together, and they don't sound out all of them. It's weird. I grandma tried to teach me some words, and I just basically said, "I'm sorry, I'm too American. I don't understand." <laughs> but anyway, she is a supernatural being, or one of a trio of sisters with the same name really okay yes in some stories she is a trio of sisters all named baba yaga that's interesting because apparently when you have a deformed witch for a child times three you only think of one good name and then you're done i guess so she appears as deformed or a ferocious looking woman so in fairy tales baba yaga flies around a mortal or a mortar and she wields a pestle So she has a magic (laughs) flying mortar, mortar, I can't say that word, and she wields the pestle like a club. Like an almost literal flying saucer? Yes, yes. (laughs) Um, She dwells deep in the forest and is usually in a hut described as standing on chicken legs. This is delightful, okay. Yeah, so if you see a lot of Russian, Polish, 
even some Romanian um, depictions of Baba Yaga, which I have attached a couple, it is literally like the most dilapidated hut on top of giant ass chicken legs. Where did so, she get the giant ass chicken? That they never explained. She just has a <laughs> hut on chicken feet. Magic. There she is just no chicken. Magic. It. If there's no chicken, it's just the chicken feet. So That's she it. just took regular chicken feet and magic them big. Or that's just the house she was born in. <laughs> okay. It never has an, ex- you don't get a lot of answers. You get more questions, which is why I love her so much. So many questions. Okay. So Baba Yaga may help or hinder those that encounter or seek her out and may play a maternal role. She has associations with the forest wildlife. According to Vladimir Propp's folktale morphology, Baba Yaga commonly appears as either a donor or a villain, or maybe it's altogether ambiguous. So basically, she's just one giant question mark atop chicken legs. Well, that's because there's three of them. One is evil, one is good, and one is neutral. Or they're all like multiple personalities inside one chicken hut, because <laughs> I don't think you can be a normal person with a chicken hut and spikes on, or skulls on spikes and yeah yeah i feel like that's sending quite a clear message that this is not your typical hut right she was probably just some normal as crazy lady who wanted to be left alone and then all of these stories about her are like mold molding and forming together like i saw the hut with giant chicken legs no you didn't you're drunk as shit I love that it was a normal ass crazy lady. <laughs> yes, just a normal crazy lady without the supernatural aspect of it. Right, right, right. Just a crazy old Polish baba, baba meaning grandma, or right. actually baba means old woman, but it's usually used in either way. It's fucking funny. I find I it hilarious. I, yeah. So Andreas Johns identifies Baba Yaga as one of the most memorable and distinctive figures in Eastern European folklore. And most people have heard that term. Baba Yaga. Yeah. They may not know what it's about. They know it's some kind of witch. So um, she is observed that she is enigmatic and often exhibits striking ambiguity. John summarizes Baba Yaga as the many faceted figure capable of inspiring researchers to see her as a cloud, moon, death, winter, snake, bird, pelican, or earth goddess, tomic matriarchal ancestress female initiator if you need an epitaph written apparently you need to like hire this john's dude because holy fuck yeah you know what woman just wanted to do it all she didn't she did she did she did not want any any one label she's like i'm gonna have all the labels give me all of the adjectives and then i'm just gonna shake them up in some tales, a trio of Baba Yagas appear as sisters, all sharing the same name, because once again, nobody had any creativity beyond the first name. No, I love this so much. <laughs> For example, there is a Russian folk tale called The Maiden Tsar, collected in the 19th century by Alexander Afnyesinyev. I'm sure that's wrong. Ivan, a handsome merchant's son, makes his way to the home of one of the three Baba Yagas. He journeyed onwards, straight ahead, and finally came to a little hut. It stood in the open field, turning on chicken legs. He entered and found Baba Yaga the bony leg. Fee-fee, she said. The Russian smell was never heard of nor caught sight of here, but it has come by itself. Are you here of your own free will or by compulsion, my good youth? Largely of my own free will and twice as much by compulsion. Do you know Baba Yaga, where lies the thrice tenth kingdom? No, I do not, she said and told him to go to her second sister. She might know. Mm. Half of this isn't going to make sense, but it's fine. Uh, Ivan... (laughs) (laughs) Ivan walks for some time before encountering a small hut identical to the first. This Baba Yaga makes the same comments and asks him the same question as the first, and Ivan asks the same question. The second Baba Yaga does not know either and directs him to the third, but she says if she gets angry with him and wants to devour you, take three horns from her and ask her permission to blow them. 
blow the first one softly, the second one louder, and the third still louder. Ivan thanks her and continues on his journey. Apparently, the last Baba Yaga sister really likes ska bands and keeps three horns on her at all times. <laughs> Wait, I'm just loving the idea that this is just one woman and there's this like path that just does this big loop. So he's just coming across the same hut repeatedly. I feel like it is. I seriously Massive feel like it is. That or she's got a fucking chicken leg hut so she can chicken leg jolt forward. So he thinks, oh, this is the similar hut, but it's not in the same place because why would I think that a hut on giant ass chicken feet could move? But did you say it was like spinning or some shit? Yeah, the first one she was spinning and then like when he's not paying attention, it's going to like sprint forward and be like, yeah. oh, let me change my kerchief so I look a little different. <laughs> Seriously, this is why I love this woman. It's so good. Okay. After walking for some time, I eventually Ivan finds the chicken leg hug of the youngest of the three sisters turning in an open field. How they know this the youngest, I don't know. The third and youngest of the Baba Yagas makes the same comment about the Russian smell before, before running to wet her teeth and consume Ivan. Ivan begs her to give him three horns, and she does so. The first he blows softly, the second louder, and the third louder yet. This causes birds of all sorts to arrive and swarm the hut. One of the birds is the fire bird, which tells him to hop on its back or Baba Yaga will eat him. Like he a does phoenix? so the firebird i don't think the this version of the firebird is like rising from the ashes i think he's constantly always a firebird oh okay all right i had a book of russian fairy tales it is somewhere in a box somewhere and it's illustrated beautifully and that's probably why i love the baba yaga so damn much is because she's so fucked up and i was like a little kid i'm reading this going i don't give a shit about ivan or olga or whoever i'm rooting for this bitch (laughs) but i have problems so anyway, he jumps on the firebird, firebird, Baba Yaga rushes him and grabs the firebird by its tail. The bird leaves with Ivan, leaving Baba Yaga behind with a fistful of firebird feathers. Ah, oh, nuts. Sport it again. And like the picture that I'll show you. Yeah. Giant ass fucking nose. Like just beyond like ridiculous. And she's all crooked and she looks hideous, but I bet under all of that it's like all prosthetics like she put something on her face like i'm gonna make him think i look fucking weird and in some of them she has iron teeth well i mean she's clearly taken multiple steps to try to keep people away so why not Let, let's just why take not? it one step further and dress it up <laughs> she's an eccentric cosplayer that doesn't have time for people's bullshit <sighs> yeah that's all um, so basically that was a snippet of, of Baba Yaga's story. Again, someone has to help. In this case, it was the middle Baba Yaga, because we all know what they say about middle children. They middle never peacemakers. Appreciate. They are. And they never appreciate, you know, they're never appreciated. So yeah. if they get a chance to make their sister grab some firebird feathers, they will. Or again, same Baba Yaga with her mobile hut, just going, I'm gonna tell him to do this. And this and this and this, and I'll record the whole thing to watch later. I kind of love the idea of one Baba Yaga just fucking with the world, but you know, you know, seriously, I love it too because she's always you never know what you're going to get with a Baba Yaga story. Is she going to be the villain? Is she going to help you? Do you need her for a piece of your story? And you may or may not get eaten, it depends on who you run into along the way. And how does all these people know how to fuck with Baba Yaga? I feel like they're working in cahoots. Oh. But anyway, so that's the last I have about like just the background of Baba Yaga. What I find interesting is they have modern adaptations. Okay. Because again, Baba Yaga is pretty famous. So she's everywhere. Um, Baba Yaga appears as a grotesque child eating witch, is a prominent character in the Hellboy comics franchise including the 2019 film installment. Really? Okay. Which I did not see the 29, 21. Try again. Wow. Words. 2019 Hellboy. I've seen all the other Hellboys, but I was really scared to see the 2019 one because it's David Harbour and not Ron Perlman. And Ron Perlman will always be Hellboy for me. Even though Ron Perlman gave his blessing. Yeah. I still have concerns. 
but maybe fair. now that I know that Baba Yaga's in it, I'll have to watch it. That can be the worth it. Baba Yaga. Yeah. Uh, the film character John Wick is referred to by his enemies as Baba Yaga, the name used synonymous, synonymously with the term boogeyman, oh. which I recently watched the John Wick, the first one, because, you know, Zach was telling me how I had to watch it. And of course, I had to get over the whole sad part about the puppy. But yeah. once he said, Baba Yaga, I'm like, what? John Wick is Baba Yaga? I am 100% Minute. in it. <laughs> and then there is a Dragon Ball Z character, Fortune Teller Baba, who is based on Baba Yaga, hmm. as is the fellow anime character Yubaba from Spirited Away which I absolutely caught. I'm like, oh, that has to be a, a Baba Yaga. Yep. And there are two in that movie. There's Baba, there's Yubaba, who is kind of the ambitious, cruel, witch type character. And then the other one is Neba, who's the nice one that's helpful. <laughs> so I was like, they just needed a third one, but whatever. Yeah. Yep. In, in Miyazaki's Howl's Moving Castle, the castle itself is modeled after her walking hut. And if you look at the castle, it has two, like, mechanical fucking-ass chicken feet. It's fucking chicken feet. Yes. If you look at Howl's Moving Castle, it's this big monstrosity, but it is being powered by steam-powered mechanical fucking chicken feet. It's fabulous. That's amazing. Um, And the last thing I have is the ninth movement of Mardest Mergorsky's Suite pictures at an exhibition is titled hut on hen's legs baba yaga and it is inspired by a painting by victor harman depicting the same oh my god the chicken feet everybody's stuck on the chicken feet but i think that's fair i mean i would how are you you're just walking through the woods in russia poland and just da 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 that's a fucking house on giant ass chicken feet. I didn't know they made chicken feet. You know what they need to do? What? They'll never do it. But if if um, Sesame Street is in Poland, I hope that one Halloween episode, they put a house on Big Bird because he would look like Baba Yaga's hut with his big ass feet. <laughs> they need to do they that. They could do it. Jim Henson Company, please reach out to the Polish hearts of all of I guess me and anyone else who loves Baba Yaga and put a fucking house on Big Bird and he'll be like, huh, suddenly I feel like eating children. <laughs> but maybe not that part. That's maybe not disturbing be like, in a children's show at all. Maybe that'll be like the side cut or the unreleased cut or some shit like that. They could just do a Jim Henson adaptation, like movie version of Baba Yaga, like they did what they take New York sure. and they did what, what was the pirate one they did pirates of the caribbean no was it treasure, oh, treasure island? island yeah yeah like, treasure island that one had tim curry in it yes it did it was fucking fabulous fantastic but anyway we're gonna have to do an episode on tim curry one of these times we are i love him so much there's a lot of fangirling to happen there but yes like they could just do it that way like right take- children's aspect out of it this is no longer a children's show this is for adults <laughs> <laughs> this is the yeah. adult version of baba yaga and like sweetums is going to be in it the big giant ass fucking monster that's always the nicest guy miss piggy yes. will probably be baba yaga yes great yes All right, jim it. henson company do russian and polish fairy tales please get on it okay so that is what i have for baba yaga all right that was fun i enjoyed that <laughs> <Good>. <sighs> Okay, so my turn. Uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, give us a like, share, subscribe on any platform. You can find us on social media. We are on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook at Our Trivial Obsessions. We are on Twitter at Our Trivial Pod. We have a website, www.ourtrivialobsessions.com. That's where you're going to find our episode extras and bonus materials and references. Um, you can email us at randomqueensobsess at gmail.com. Random. Because we are queens because we are obsessed because, because we, do. we do so email us there reach out with anything you want to add to the conversation or any topic requests for a future if you episode. have a favorite baba yaga tale heck yes anything reach out be friendly um and with that we will see you next week bye, bye.